we believe that freedom of religion is very important, uh, important steps towards peace. Can you tell us about your work in this area? You hear me? I didn't hear you. Are you okay. talking to Jerry or myself? We, I, we, hear. I will. To Dr. Lau, yeah, just to you, Dr. Lau. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. Lau, we believe that freedom of religion is very important steps toward peace. Towards peace. Can you tell us about your work in this area? In the area, I'm sorry, in the area of about freedom, about of, religion. freedom of religion. If, it's, it's sorry, it's just not quite clear. We, be, we believe that freedom of religion is very important oh, step towards place. peace. Oh, great. So, well, yeah. what do you do about this? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Line is good. I think freedom of religion is one of the key issues of the day. Um, so, for example, uh, here in the U.S., a uh, catalyst worked with Christians, Muslims, and Jews and to uh, develop what we call the seven resolutions. And it's against uh, prejudice, hatred, etc. And these, these resolutions uh, were an attempt to partner, just as you were talking about the, the similarities with the Quran, the Torah, and the Injil, and the Gospel. Uh, so we came together and wrote seven resolutions. But, but the purpose was to say, we believe Muslims as Americans uh, should have freedom to build mosques in the U.S. And so we came together and uh, formally protected the, the rights and freedom of Muslims in the U.S., and we want to continue that. Uh, I went and spoke um, in the Philippines. Uh, there's an organization, the Philippines Center for Islam and Democracy, led by Amina Rasul, and she had me come and speak uh, at a conference there, and one of the things I mentioned near the end of my talk is I said, we always need to protect the minorities. So I was a Christian with the majority of Christians in the Philippines speaking to Muslims, and I said, so I want to protect your rights here. But in Indonesia, where I lived before, Christians are the minority, so they need to be protected. Uh, so I think this is one of the huge... Um, peacemaking issues of our era. So I'm so grateful you asked, and I will continue if I may. Um, I've just met with um, Dr. Sayed Saeed of the Islamic, of ISNA, Islamic uh, Society of North America. And I was so encouraged to hear that uh, they have begun an emphasis on uh, religious minorities in Muslim-majority countries. They're gathering scholars together and uh, taking initiative in this important area. Now, I'm not a Muslim, so I don't know all the Muslim initiatives, but I just want to say I think this is great, and uh, I'll be promoting this in different ways and working with uh, ISNA and the Muslim leaders there uh, to make this known. Um, I do think the challenge of persecution. I, after mentioning and affirming uh, my Muslim friends and leaders with ISNA, uh, this is a big challenge around the world. Yeah. The persecution of minorities. I know a lot of Christians are persecuted. <coughs> um, so I, I think the challenge for Muslim peacemakers and Christian peacemakers uh, is to work at, at all levels, and especially it would be great if we could partner so we are protecting minorities, whether they're Muslims or Christians anywhere in the world. Um, I think that's pleasing to God. Uh, one of Jesus' great nicknames in the Bible is Prince of Peace. And uh, so we're serious about following him and trying to do that. And uh, thank you for this opportunity just to mention this very important topic. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And Jerry, your comment, please. Um, well, the uh, one thing that I know Akar brought this up quite a bit is, uh, and it's also uh, in the uh, in the Quran, that Muslims are to protect um, all people of, of all religions, uh, and even people of no religions. Uh, so, the and this it's also you know in the in the other books of faith, um, there are uh, I think a lot of romantic a lot of romanticism sometimes that and sentimentalities that come into some different religions. 
uh, especially when you look at the more conservatives uh, in, yeah. in any religion. And uh, the, the thing of it is, is uh, and I like the comment that was made a while ago, we can go right back to that. Read the gospel and follow it. Uh, whether you're Muslim or, or Jewish or Christian, um, follow your faith and follow it well, and follow it to the book. Uh, and I think that would uh, eliminate a lot of the problem we have uh, with yeah. the discrimination yeah. that we see. One of the other um, things that we emphasize in, in Peace Catalyst is what we call the Dahua Evangelism Peace Project. Dahua, is, as you know, I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly, but the uh, Arabic term for invitation or Islamic uh, propagation of the faith. And then evangelism is sharing the good news. But the reality is, as I see it, um, and especially if we're going to be talking to conservative Muslims and conservative Christians, is in many ways we're both missionary religions. Uh, we want to share our faith. And, and so the challenge is, I think, for the future, especially in a globalized world, the interconnected world, is uh, we need to acknowledge that Muslims will share their faith, Christians will, and yet we need to live in peace. And that's going to take um, people with strong faith. And um, I, it's one of those things that we need to put on the table. It's not really popular uh, on both sides in many ways. But I think this is part of dealing with uh, freedom of religion and persecution. All right. 